Hey, Dragon Slayers. I just got through eating about four and a half hours ago. Blood sugar is 120. So I had some fast food for the first time in probably over six months. It was Chick-fil-A. It was really good. Blood sugar peaked at about 138. I mean, I know it's not something that's really good for you, but it's okay on occasion. If you only eat fast food three or four times a year, you're probably doing okay. <laughs> so <clears throat> today's topic is all about how insulin resistance is often the root cause of strokes. So what's really fascinating, I pulled two studies. I've got the links in the description for you to check out. Well, one is a study and one is an article referencing a, a different study. So in the first study, it talks about how insulin resistance was a common factor in patients with stroke. The study investigated the association between insulin resistance and outcomes in non-diabetic patients with first ever acute ischemic stroke. That is very interesting. So you can have insulin resistance without having diabetes. The analogy that I like to use is that basically when you have diabetes, the dam is broken. When you have pre-diabetes, the dam is cracked and linking and almost broken. But you can still suffer serious health consequences and even death without having diabetes. So this one article looked at, sorry, this one study looked at how patients with ischemic stroke without a history of diabetes. Uh, the study included 1,245 patients with first-time acute ischemic stroke. Insulin resistance was associated with an increased risk of death, stroke reoccurrence, and poor outcomes in non-diabetic patients. So, yeah, it's crazy. The second study is specifically on people with type 2 diabetes. It says that a study of more than 100,000 people with type 2 diabetes presented at the annual meeting of the European Association and Study for Diabetes held online this year found that insulin resistance is associated with stroke. The higher the insulin resistance, the greater the risk of stroke. In research from Dr. Alexander Zabala, the colleagues... Uh, at the Institute and researchers at Gothenburg University uh, and the National Diabetes Registry in Sweden found insulin resistance when the body cells don't respond properly to insulin and can't easily make take up glucose from the blood is a key feature of type 2 diabetes and the levels vary from patient to patient. Dr. Zavala estimated glucose disposal rate EGDR is a measurement of insulin resistance. Uh, EGDR has previously been shown to be a good proxy for insulin resistance and is calculated using a formula of factors in a patient's waist circumference, uh, the hemoglobin H1C, and whether they have high blood pressure or not. Health records were used to calculate of the 1,000 sorry, of the 104,697 type 2 diabetic patients in Sweden, the participants had an average age of 63, 44.5% were female. They were followed up by an average of 5.6 years in which 4,201 or 4% had a stroke. The analysis revealed that the higher a person's insulin resistance, the greater their chance of having a stroke. Those with the lowest insulin resistance were 40% less likely to have a stroke than those with the highest insulin resistance. Uh, age, cholesterol levels, smoking, heart conditions, and other traditional risk factors for stroke were all adjusted for. The study found that the higher insulin resistance was linked to a higher risk of death after a stroke. Those with the lowest resistance were 28 <clears throat> per less likely to die during the follow-up period 28 times less likely to die during the follow-up period than most than those with the most severe insulin resistance. Further analysis showed that high blood pressure to be more uh, strongly linked to stroke than waist circumference or even hemoglobin A1C. This study concludes that we found in individuals with type 2 diabetes a low EGDR, a simple measure of insulin resistance, was associated with an increased risk of stroke and mortality. 
So there you have it, guys. Two studies. Check out both of them in the description below. One proving that even without type 2 diabetes, the other one proving with type 2 diabetes, you're at a higher risk of stroke. So that's what I've got for you today, guys. And remember that together you and I will slay the dreaded diabetes dragon as well as the strokes.